Full disclosure, news and commentary number 11. Yay, 11. Um, hey everybody, hope you're doing great. I just recorded a Be Kind review number two, um, and it was great. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and knock this out. Now, I may not release them at the same time. I've, I've already put out the Be Kind review. I may save this for tomorrow morning just to space them out a little bit. We'll see how I'm feeling about it. Anyway, let's just jump right into it. Of course, we have great commentary. My commentary, um, people have said they like it at the beginning when I say what the commentary is going to be about or at least hint at it. Um, it's gonna be about Scenic City and um, it's also gonna blend into sort of a teachable moment. I guess you could consider it sort of a uh, pro wrestler's handbook um, in part as well. All right, let's just jump right into it. APW, first of all, I love um, that, you know, APW is a show that runs every week, right? So June 14th, June 21st, June 28th. So June 28th is Freedom Fight, which is their big show. So 21 is the, the 21st is the go home. And so there's a thing about the 14th. Here's the thing, APW, I love you. You know I love you. Um, put your fucking crowds. We've gotten to the point where everybody's putting their crowds. And I'm so happy about that. And you know, we've had some controversy about people lying about their crowds, whatever. But the point is, you gotta put your crowds. I don't care if you just put out a cursory thing about your card, so-and-so wrestled so-and-so, so-and-so beat so-and-so, so-and-so beat so-and-so, so-and-so beat so-and-so, that's it, next show is blank. Even if that's the report that you're sending in, and I think you should do more, but it's better something than nothing, right? You wanna be on the radar. Have to put your crowd. Please do that, APW. I love you. I want to promote you. I want to talk about you more. Um, but I just can't if you're not going to put your crowd. Because that's it's it's part of the bit. It's part of the thing. Yeah, speaking of putting your crowds, Pro South at about 50. Um, Rob Rod, Rodney Roberts, Robert Baker um, went to two different shows. By the way, you guys need to take advantage of the fact that he's saying, tell me what shows are out. He's obviously going to go to any and all of them, and Rob's feeling it. And you want to take advantage of that because, you know, I used to say, if Larry's doesn't go to your show, your show ain't shit. And it's true, right? But right now, if Rob's not going to your show, he doesn't get to your show, it's because you're lazy. Because Rob's willing. Rod. I don't know. So he went to Pro South, drew 50. Um, but that's pro south man you know they run all the time and you know they do their thing um disruptor wrestling 150 not too shabby a relatively slow wrestling weekend so they both got uh some love a few shows coming up this weekend though right um spine buster on june 19th now if you listen to the 10 things I hate about Georgia wrestling, you know, you know, I hate Spinebuster's name, but I will say this. They took that in the proper spirit. I obviously I was thinking of Spinebuster first and foremost when I, when I had that list about, you know, naming yourself after a move, but Spinebuster, man, they're, they're putting their stuff out. They're sending more announcements about their shows beforehand and then they they plan on sending uh sort of recaps of their shows afterwards that's good you gotta you gotta you gotta do the minimum and get in the game and they're in the game so spine busters happening june 19th uh that's tonight holy shit maybe i need to put this out tonight um total aggression is on uh june 21st in the building in the landmark right and uh action wrestling on june 21st i'm curious because i know larry's going to that show what kind of crowd are they going to draw and here's something else that i think that they're doing that's very good i know about the matt griffin billy buck thing even though i don't particularly go out of my way to follow what action is doing they've done a stellar job and you know what I know about the Billy Buck, Matt Griffin thing? Two things. Super kick to the face picture, which I saw all over the damn place. 
well done, Matt Griffin and Action Crew. Well done. To one, get that picture taken. Awesome. Whoever took that picture, fucking kudos. That picture helped define that whole thing and make that whole thing real and make it important. Greatness. And uh, Matt Griffin continually, I'm going to punch him in the mouth. I'm going to punch him on the mouth. I'm going to punch him on the mouth. I've heard that phrase echoing in my skull more than anything anybody's doing in Georgia wrestling. Think about that. I'm going to punch him in the mouth. I'm going to punch him in the mouth. Fuck, you know what? If I was anywhere near the, the that neck of the woods, if I was in that state, I would pay for a ticket. That's the highest compliment I can give because I don't pay to go to wrestling shows. None of them. WrestleMania, no, I don't pay. You fucking get me a free ticket. I'm stupid. Platinum, damn you. But I would buy a ticket to see Matt Griffin punch him in the mouth. So good job. Kudos. Kudos, kudos, kudos. It's already time for the commentary. We're only six minutes in and I'm already at Scenic City. Uh, I'm trying to keep this one a little shorter. Um, I'm going to do something. I'm going to read the field for Scenic City. What Larry just wrote me. What did Larry just write? Let's look at that. Oh, Larry just agreeing with me. Um, I guess Larry's already could not agree more about Meltzer's work on AEW. See, I nail him, guys. I nail him. So you do, you want to watch Be Kind review number two? Um, yeah, uh, Meltzer to me seems inspired by AEW. If, if AEW has succeeded in nothing else, they're the sexy promotion right now. And it's important to be sexy. Let's get into the commentary. Scenic City Invitational. In, invitational. Shit. Um, sorry about that. Um, beginning of... I mean, it's coming up, right? August 2nd, August 3rd at the Saudi Daisy High School. Um... I'm going to read the entrance because that's going to lead me into the commentary. AC Mack, B-Boy, Anthony Henry, Daniel uh, McCabe or Maccabe, Matt Tremont. Mm, Matt Tremont, yeah, that's your hardcore guy, clearly. Slim J, glad to see Slim J getting as much work as he is all over. Joey Lynch, of course, Jaden Newman. Who, it seems like they're kind of building the story around Jamin, Jaden Newman as the local guy. That's just my outsider opinion. Um, O'Shea Edwards, Billy Buck, Kevin Koo. Um, I know him. Tony Deppen, Nick Iggy, Brett Eason, and James Drake. And now Marco Stunt. Okay. Um... Now, there's people that you like. There's people that you're happy to see there. There's people that you see on every show in Georgia. Um, and they're going to be there in Tennessee. Um, but you know what I don't get? What I'm not getting off of Scenic City? Sexy. The sexy factor. Um, that's what I'm going to talk about. You got to have the sexy factor, man. And, um, and sexy is one of those things that it means different things to different people. Different people find different things sexy, blah, 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 blah. But it's the perfect word. It's like the word cool. Things are cool or they're not. Right? You can't force them, really. Things are sexy and they're not. Especially when it comes to pro wrestling. And just some things work and some things don't. Right? And this is what I'm saying. And this is just from an outsider perspective looking at it. Scenic City seems to be playing not to lose. And playing not to lose is not sexy. Where is the... So Southern Fry did something unbelievable to me in preparation for Shindig. Which is, they managed to make their thing sexy. Southern Fried, which is in many ways has the least chance of being sexy of all of them. But you could feel the energy and the guys doing the video. Where are the, where are the fucking videos, Scenic City? Where are the guys with 
candid interviews talking about how important scenic city is this it's the very definition to me of resting on your laurels of we've got this reputation now because we've done it for three years even though the last year was not nearly the success as the other two were by any sort of reasonable measure and it feels like they're coasting that's what it feels like and if that's what it feels like and if that's my perception and it's probably the perception from another a number of other people or worse they're just not interested because it's not sexy what's the story that's interesting about this everything is sort of mechanically based this guy's in because he won this rumble this guy's in because he won the future legends thing and then that lets him in it's all this mechanical fucking shit. Who's on the bubble of the NCAA tournament? That matters because we really love the NCAA tournament. Scenic City hasn't earned that. Just existing doesn't make you sexy. How many years in business doesn't make you sexy? How many years you've been a veteran in wrestling doesn't make you sexy? And you guys got the sexy factor matters. If I talked about how everybody's got to eat shit. And there's something about that that rang a little truth bell in everybody's hearts that know what the fuck they're talking about and know what the fuck they're listening to and understanding. Hear me. Sexy is everything. What's sexy about your show? When I read these reports, pro South, you know what? They're not sexy, man. What's something happening that's interesting? Corey Hollis, sexy. Corey Hollis makes shit happen. And in fact, he's so sexy that Southern Fried, something that I worry about is they lost Corey Hollis, who's not there, going to be there anymore. And he did such a good job being sexy that now they're just assuming J Jacob Ashworth's going to step in and be their guy and super sexy. I don't know if that's going to happen. He slayed the sexy dragon. And there doesn't appear to really be another dragon for him to slay that's as sexy. And then they lost Drew Blood. Who did his part, went out like a stud, put a guy over on the way out. Is Xander Ramon sexy? I don't think he is. So Southern Fried went from... Sexy, sexy, sexy to hefty, hefty, hefty. Not so much. But Scenic City, back to them. What's sexy? What's the story? What's going to drag me in? They don't have a Gunner Miller. Is he going to win this time? Is Gunner Miller inevitable in the big time? And he, is he going to hang with the big boys? And those factors aren't there. I read that list. And in their eyes, it's probably... Well, what's cool about it is any one of those guys can win, but... We all know, if I just read through the list, you, I can tell you, without knowing a damn thing, uh, uh, the eight guys that don't have a fucking prayer of winning this thing and probably won't get out of the first round. It's just too obvious, because I don't know any of their stories, and I don't know why Scenic City is important anymore, because nobody's telling me. Where's the sexy? Slim J's got a great story. Hell, every one of these guys has a great story. But again, it's part of the thing of when you have people with a fan's mentality running a thing, they forget that just having a tournament doesn't make things important. And this is all wrestling groups. Just because you think a tournament's work, how many groups have failed with tournaments over the last five years and have spelled the near death or the death of promotions because they bought into this thing of just having a tournament is enough and it's important how why we wrestle had not just one but two completely disastrous tournaments that almost ended wrestling in that building right how 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 many times were we promised a tournaments of different stripes from AWE and we never got them or we didn't really get them or we didn't really buy and combat was going to do this tournament and it never fucking happened and now they're gone folks 
Vince Russo is a moron, but Vince Russo is right when he said once upon a time, a wrestling belt is just a prop. People got really mad about that, but what he meant, and I can't believe I'm, you're making me defend that fucking cross wielding cocksucker, but, you, but what he meant was things don't have a value in and of themselves. You have to create a value underneath them. Ironic coming from the guy that didn't know how to give value to anything, but he was right about a wrestling title. In and of itself, it doesn't mean anything unless you give it a perceived value and use it appropriately. And so it goes with the tournament. The interesting thing about tournaments, think about movies where tournaments happen. Hoosiers. Why is it significant that they get to the final, right? If I say Hoosiers, it's these these kids from a small nothing podunk fucking town in Indiana who get to the finals and I, I can remember individual scenes from that movie because it's so compelling even decades later after when I saw it you know when when Gene Hackman the coach measures the the has them measure the basketball rim from the floor and then they go like oh it's 10 feet and then he makes the point, yeah, the same as our gym. Basically letting those guys know, like, you can hang in this tournament. You can do it. And uh, that's a compelling story. Fucking blood sport. Compelling as fuck, right? Like, you knew what the final... You know the final's gonna be Van Damme against fucking Chong Lee. Chong Lee! Chong Lee! Like, you know that shit, right? But they, they use the whole tournament to build up Chong Lee as this fucking monster. He even beats up fucking Ogre from fucking Revenge of the Nerds. He fucking takes his fucking bandana and puts it on his leg and it's all awesome shit. And then he fucking goes heels out in the final and cheats. And, but Bloodsport, what a great example, right? Of a tournament. I mean, that movie was so compelling. Not only launched Van Damme's career... It, people actually thought that that was based on fucking reality. That's how great and compelling that was. Well, pro wrestling, if people keep saying it, comparing it to movies and other forms of fiction and entertainment, um, Scenic City, what's sexy about your movie? What's sexy about your movie? What's the synopsis of your movie that's going to make me want to go and see it? Now, PWX... Um, they've got a big show coming up and that Jushin Liger video and all that shit, that shit's sexy as fuck. So let me ask it in this way. What's your sizzle reel of your event? Now, even if you're not going to put out a video to promote it and people should in this day and age, but that's neither here nor there. What are your sizzle reels to make us want to go see it? Um, what are the stories being told? Southern Honor had a bunch of videos about that main event, right? They got Shannon Moore to do one, got AC Mack to do one. They like they they told those stories, man. And uh, the sexy factor is missing in a lot of Georgia wrestling. And if nothing else, if you listening to me and understanding me right now makes you think sexy factor whenever you're booking something or you're thinking about how to promote something or how to adjust your shit posters or whatever, then good. I've done my job. See you on the flip side. See you soon, by the way. I thought the last um, tipping point um, was a very good one and it's worth checking out with Cabana Man, Cabana Dan Man, Cabana Man Dan, Cabana Man Rob, Rob, Rod, I don't know, uh, with him. And, uh, and the, the head honcho of PWX, who was very compelling and very cool. So anyway, this has been Full Disclosure News and Commentary.